Full Colony History. We dig into the OCHM archives to create a meal based off of a menu from one of Taunton's famous restaurants. This one was actually located inside the Taunton Inn, which operated just a few doors down from the Old Colony History Museum from the 1930s to 1960. Locals and faraway visitors alike would eat, drink, and dance the night away in the hotel's dining and ballrooms. And this restaurant was located in their basement. It was the famous Herring Run restaurant. And from their menu, we've selected a cocktail, starter, entree, and dessert. Our cocktail is going to be a clover club. It's gin-based with some fresh flavors of lemon and raspberry. Our starter will be a classic Caesar salad made entirely from scratch. And for our entree, we will have a chopped sirloin steak topped with some fresh homemade onion rings. For dessert, we have a light and sweet angel cake topped with a decadent chocolate sauce. So I'm hungry, let's get to it. Here are our ingredients for our from scratch Caesar salad dressing. We need mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, anchovy paste, a clove of garlic or some minced garlic, some lemon juice, salt, and pepper. And for tools, you'll need a quarter cup measure, a tablespoon, a teaspoon, and a half teaspoon measure, a whisk, and a storage container to hold your dressing. You can make this ahead of time and it'll keep in the fridge for a few weeks. The process of making our Caesar dressing is fairly simple. Once we measure out all our ingredients, it's just a matter of whisking them all together. So to start, we are gonna need a tablespoon of lemon juice. So I'm gonna slice and squeeze this and then I'll measure it out. Tablespoon of that lemon juice. And then I'm gonna reserve the rest of this because we'll use it in our Clover Club cocktail. Next, we need a quarter cup mayonnaise. We need about a clove of minced garlic, a teaspoon each of anchovy paste, Dijon, and Worcestershire sauce. Finally, we just need a half teaspoon each of salt and pepper. Give this all a good whisk, and then we'll transfer it into our storage container. Delicious, very tangy with the fresh lemon juice. I love that. Good thing I have this whole thing of anchovy paste because I think I'll be making my own Caesar dressing from now on. That's pretty delicious. Transfer it into our ball jar. <laughs> Probably a little overboard with the size of this ball jar. And there we go. To make our croutons, we just need a few very simple ingredients. We need some bread, some salt, and some olive oil. Now for tools, you'll need a bowl. I'm gonna use a four cup measure because we need about three cups of uh, the bread. You'll also need a baking sheet and to preheat your oven to 375. To create the croutons, all you need to do is rip up some bread. I'm gonna cut a piece off of this. And I'm just gonna start tearing pieces until I fill this. All right. So this is loosely four cups, but uh, I like croutons, so I don't mind having a little extra. Uh, I'm gonna transfer this into a larger bowl so that I can easily toss it with the olive oil and salt, but we used a little bit less than a half of a small loaf to fill this up, and this is just an Italian bread. Transfer our bread cubes in here. Make sure none of these pieces are gigantic. Need a nice pinch of salt. Need about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. All right, next we will transfer these to a baking sheet and get them into our oven at 375. Spreading the olive oil coated breadcrumbs, bread pieces, I should say. Spread them out evenly. Now once our oven comes up to temp, 
These will go into the oven for about seven to 10 minutes, keeping an eye on it, uh, giving them a little bit of a stir if it looks like they need it. We will see them when they're nice, toasty brown. Crouton spent about eight minutes in the oven. Pretty nice and crisp. Taste test. Perfect. Now we're going to arrange our Caesar salad. We have Parmesan cheese. This is actually a lazy blend of Parmesan and Romano. We have our homemade croutons, homemade dressing in our gigantic jar, and some lettuce. Now, classic Caesars use romaine, but I prefer this local lettuce. Um, I just like it a lot better. It's a lot crunchier and a little bit uh, less bitter than romaine. And then to this, we're gonna add a third of a cup of our Parmesan. Add some of our nice crunchy croutons here. And then add in our dressing. Give that a toss and see if we need any more dressing. I like mine not super overloaded with dressing. Actually, it looks pretty well coated for my taste. If you like more, feel free to add it. <laughs> Runaway lettuce. We'll set this aside until we're ready to serve. Here are the ingredients for our onion ring recipe. All-purpose flour, baking soda, seasoned salt, we have a cup of cold water, two eggs, and then of course our onions and vegetable oil for frying. Now for our tools, you'll need a heavy bottom pot and a thermometer to keep an eye on the oil temperature a medium mixing bowl and a whisk, and then a paper towel lined cooling rack, as well as some measuring spoons and a one cup measure, wet and dry. The first step is to slice up our onions. So two large onions, I'm gonna cut off the top and bottom of each, peel away the skin. So now that I have my onions peeled, we're gonna slice them into quarter inch sections. The next step is to add our oil into our pot and get it hot so we can start frying these. You wanna have your thermometer attached to the side there if you have that kind. And we need about two inches of oil in here. So we want to get this going over medium-high heat and it needs to come up to 375 degrees. We're going to get started on the batter for the onion rings. So we start with one cup of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of seasoned salt, and three quarters teaspoon of baking soda. Whisk this together. We'll add in our cold water, one cup. I'm gonna break my eggs into this and then whisk this all together until the batter is smooth. Our cooking oil has come up to temperature. We're looking at 375 Fahrenheit. Now we're gonna start getting the batter onto our onion rings and dropping them in. Do a few at a time so we don't overcrowd the pot. Get each ring nice and coated. You need a few minutes on each side as they fry. We're just gonna do a few at a time. And we have our paper towel lined rack right next to us. So they can cool and get some of that fat off. And we'll repeat this process until we run out of batter or onions, whichever comes first. Here is our mountain of onion rings that these two onions have created. I have layers upon layers here. Two onions made a ton of onion rings, way more than two people could ever eat in one night. We'll see how these reheat in the air fryer in the next couple days. We're gonna let these cool down a little bit while we make our steak. Now we're gonna get started on our sirloin steaks. We need our ground sirloin, salt and pepper, some parsley, and cooking oil. And you'll need a large skillet to cook them in. 
and we'll heat that over medium heat. So we'll get this started, get the oil in there, and our patties will come together pretty quickly. Uh, so all we need to do is form them into two oval patties. This would be very large if I only used, uh, made two out of all of this. So I'm gonna make, I think, some smaller ones, um, which just means they're gonna cook fairly quickly. I do need them to be about the same size so that they cook evenly. So now we're gonna season the exterior of our steak patties. We're gonna sprinkle some parsley flakes as well as salt and pepper. We're gonna flip these over, do the same thing on the other side, and we're gonna press those seasonings into the patties. Again, making sure they're about the same size and thickness, for that consistent cooking. So now we're gonna get them into the pan. They'll cook for about five to seven minutes on each side, depending on how uh, well done or rare you like them. I'm gonna go for a medium. using my meat thermometer to check their internal temperature. I'm looking for about 140 degrees for medium. So they're up to temperature. We're gonna remove and let them rest. To create a perfectly light and fluffy angel cake, you need to use cake flour. But you can also create your own cake flour with a couple simple pantry staples, flour and cornstarch. All you need to do is measure out one cup of flour and remove two tablespoons. You'll replace those two tablespoons of flour with two tablespoons of cornstarch. Whisk these to combine. And that will be our flour for our angel cake. Here are the ingredients for our angel cake. You'll need cake flour, which we've created from a mixture of regular all-purpose flour and cornstarch, cream of tartar, salt, 12 large egg whites at room temperature, sugar. This recipe does call for super fine sugar, but regular granulated sugar will work as well. And of course, vanilla extract. For tools, we'll need our stand mixer, some small bowls, mixing bowls. I'm gonna use some large measuring cups, some measuring spoons, as well as a whisk and a spatula. And a tube pan. First, we'll preheat our oven to 350. We're going to start to combine our flour with half of the sugar that this recipe calls for. Half is gonna mix in with the flour now, half will be combined with our egg whites later. So first we just need three quarters cup of sugar. And to sift these together, I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time. So this is our cornstarch and all-purpose flour mixture. There we have our sugar and flour mixture, nice and fluffy and well combined. Pouring our 12 egg whites into our mixer, we will beat them at a medium low speed until they become foamy. It should take a few minutes. Now we're going to add one teaspoon cream of tartar our nice foamy egg whites, as well as a quarter teaspoon salt. And then we're gonna beat this on a medium speed until some nice soft peaks begin to form. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we're going to add our one and a half tablespoons of vanilla, beat it until it's just combined, and then we're going to start sifting in our flour. To combine our flour into our egg whites, we're going to slowly add one quarter cup at a time, sift it, gently fold it, and repeat until it's all combined. Doing this very slowly and gently will help to retain that nice fluffy texture we created by beating the egg whites. Make sure you're scraping the sides, getting all the way down to combine all those egg whites with your flour and sugar mixture. Make sure it's very well combined. So you have these lovely air bubbles so we know it's still nice and light and fluffy. Next, we will transfer it to our cake pan. Going to slowly pour our batter into this ungreased tube pan. Gently spread it so it's even. And now it's time for the oven. Bake it at 350 for about 40 minutes. Our cake has been in the oven for 40 minutes. Remove it. Beautiful golden color. We'll allow it to cool completely before we attempt to remove it from the pan. So here we have our tools and ingredients to make the chocolate sauce that will top our angel cake. We have milk, half and half, granulated sugar, salt, bittersweet chocolate, two ounces, finely chopped, cornstarch, an egg yolk, and vanilla extract. Tools, you'll need a couple of measuring cups, a liquid measure, a couple measuring spoons, a whisk, and a heavy bottom medium sauce pot. So to get started, three quarters of a cup of milk, and then a quarter cup, half and half. And to that, we'll add two tablespoons of our granulated sugar, a dash of salt, and we'll get this started over medium heat. Now we're gonna add our finely chopped chocolate. Stir this. So our chocolate melts, we want it to be smooth and consistent, but we don't want to let it boil. Another two tablespoons of our sugar plus a teaspoon of cornstarch are going to go into our egg yolk. Transfer these into this container, so we'll need a little more room. I'm going to grab a new whisk. Keeping an eye on that, stirring occasionally. Remember, we want it to get nice and hot, but not boiling. We want this to reach 180 degrees. Keep stirring. Make it nice and hot. Smells amazing. Just about there. Going to slowly add our hot milk and chocolate mixture into our egg mixture. And I'm going to use a ladle just to help me control that. We're also going to turn this down to medium low because we'll need that um, when we return everything to the pan. We're going to add this back onto the heat, medium low, stirring constantly until it boils, at which time we'll remove it from the heat and add our vanilla.
finally got some bubbles going that I didn't create by whisking. This took a lot longer to come up to a boil than I thought it would. Remove this from the heat. We'll add in our quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Whisk that in. I'm gonna transfer it to a storage container and then I will top our cakes. For our Clover Club cocktail, the raspberry syrup requires just a few simple ingredients. You need one cup of sugar, half a cup of water, and half a cup of strawberries. For tools, you'll need a sauce pot and a fine mesh strainer. You'll also need a container to keep your syrup in until you're ready to use it. Over medium heat, combine the water and sugar. Stir together the sugar and water constantly until it has all dissolved. You wanna to stir to be sure that it doesn't burn. You'll know the sugar has dissolved once you can no longer feel the crystals as you stir and you're left with just a nice syrup. This is a basic simple syrup recipe, so you could stop here, but we are going to make ours a raspberry simple syrup by adding in some fresh raspberries. You can also use frozen and letting them macerate. To do that, we're gonna reduce our heat to low and add in the strawberries, stir to combine, and let the sugar do its work, stirring every few minutes. As they soften, you can use your whisk to sort of mash them down. Now that our syrup is this nice dark raspberry color, we're ready to strain and store. I'm going to place a fine mesh strainer over our storage container. As I pour this syrup in, we wanna catch all those seeds and any remaining um, bits, but we will leave the nice syrup behind. Should we get all the syrup out? So we'll discard the seeds. And then what we're left with is this delicious sweet raspberry syrup that we'll use in our Clover Club cocktail. But it's also a great addition to iced teas and a lot of other drink recipes. So this is gonna go in the fridge and chill until happy hour. Now it's time to shake up our Clover Club. So we need a cocktail shaker full of ice, gin, lemon juice, our raspberry syrup, and we're gonna separate this egg white, and you'll need a few extra raspberries for garnish. Now to measure out our ounces, I have a tablespoon, two tablespoons to each ounce, and of course you'll need a cute glass to put it all in. Preferably you would use a coupe or cocktail glass, but I don't have any of those. So I'm using this really cute polka dot wine glass. To start, We'll measure out our gin. We need two ounces or four tablespoons of gin, an ounce of lemon juice. That was a half ounce of lemon juice. It'll be super lemony. That's okay. We'll do a half ounce of our raspberry syrup, and then we'll add in our egg white. Put egg yolk in there. Shake this all up until it's nice and frothy. Drain into your glass. There you have it. The most important part, tasting our cocktail. Cheers. Oh, that is good.
the extra lemon juice I put in there makes it super tart, but uh, you can barely taste the gin thanks to it. So dangerous, but enjoy. Now here is our complete plated dinner. We have our Caesar salad, our steak and onion rings, and of course, paired with our Clover Club cocktail. It's time to have some dinner. So we have a few nice thick slices of our very light and fluffy angel cake. And I'm about to drizzle this beautiful chocolate sauce we just finished making all over. A little more couldn't kind of hurt, right? Now, for the most important part of any dessert, the taste test. The chocolate sauce tastes like hot chocolate. <laughs> it's delicious. It's just right. And the angel cake, super light and fluffy, moist. This is so good. Good thing we have a giant cake left and a whole lot of chocolate sauce because we'll be enjoying a lot of this 